In 1963, an informant told the FBI that Anthony Fat Tony Salerno was not an intelligent man. Let's check it out. I'm James Gladwish and welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the time an informant questioned Anthony Salerno's intelligence, as well as checking out some other rarely discussed information on the man famously known as Fat Tony. Anthony Fat Tony Salerno was a mobster who was respected across Cosa Nostra. Throughout his career, he would serve in various positions in the hierarchy of the Genovese crime family, allegedly including at times as consigliere, underboss and acting boss of the family, depending on the source that you read. However, back in 1963, when Salerno was working in Miami, a Florida-based informant spoke in disparaging terms about Fat Tony's intellect. An FBI file reads, MMT5 advised that he heard in April 1963, Mike Coppola has gone into semi-retirement and is no longer a leader since his release from prison. Informant heard that Salerno is now handling Coppola's interest in Florida and will take over the Coppola gang when Coppola steps down. In this regard, informant stated that Salerno is regarded as the old muscle type operator and that Salerno is not considered too intelligent, but is considered the top man in Miami Beach with the most powerful connections. The Mike Coppola mentioned is Michael Trigger Mike Coppola, the longtime captain of the Genovese crime family's 116th Street crew. As can be seen in the FBI file, the informant states that Salerno is regarded as the old muscle type operator and that Salerno is not considered too intelligent. However, Genovese captain Mike Coppola evidently considered Fat Tony more than capable of handling his vast operations in Florida. And as is well documented, Anthony Salerno also ran a highly profitable numbers business in New York. It is Fat Tony's lucrative numbers operation in Harlem that brings us to another interesting but rarely discussed piece of information on Salerno. In 1962, an informant told the FBI that Anthony Salerno wanted to work with the Gallo crew regarding his gambling operations in Harlem. The 1962 FBI file states, Salerno continues to visit New York City and according to MMT24, Salerno met in New York with Lawrence and Albert Gallo to discuss having the Gallo brothers enforce the control of gambling in the East Harlem area of New York City run by Salerno. If this information is true, it is interesting as in 1962, the Gallo crew was still at war with family boss Joseph Perfacci. This FBI file was from May 1962, when Joseph Perfacci was still alive, although peace talks were ongoing between the Gallo faction and the Perfacci family. The Gallo crew had a reputation for violence and was made up of some tough individuals. And again, if this file is to be believed, Genovese soldier Anthony Salerno wanted to use them as enforcers for his vast numbers operation in Harlem and hence met with crew leader Larry Gallo and his younger brother Albert Kid Blast Gallo. The Gallo's rebellion against family boss Joseph Perfacci may have restricted the crew's earning ability. Therefore, an opportunity to work with the wealthy Salerno may well have been desirable. The whole concept of the Gallows working with the Genovese crime family at this time isn't outside the realm of possibility. The Gallo crew had had some sort of relationship with high-ranking Genovese family mobster Anthony Tony Bendestrollo, and in early 1961, Crazy Joe Gallo was arrested in the company of Tony Bender. 
In the next photo of the police booking from that arrest, we can see from left to right, Genevieve's mobster, Joseph Joe Curley Agone, on the far left. Next to him is Genevieve's soldier, Philip Philly Katz Albanese. Next is Anthony Tony Bender Strollo, a high-ranking member of the Genovese crime family. Next is another Genovese mobster, George Filippone, followed by Genovese soldier Frank Frankie the Bug Caruso. And finally, Gallo crew member and Perfacci family soldier, Joseph Crazy Joe Gallo. In addition, after the Second Colombo Family War in the early 1970s, former Gallo crew members Albert Kid Blast Gallo and Frank Punchy Iliano moved into the Genovese crime family, both being inducted in the late 1970s and both becoming respected captains in that family. So, there were definite links between the Gallo crew and the Genovese crime family. Whether the Gallows did end up working as enforcers for Anthony Salerno is not clear. But it is an interesting piece of information regardless. Anthony Salerno will forever be famously known for his nickname, Fat Tony. However, it appears that in his younger days, his nickname was Punchy. One newspaper reported, Born and reared in the East Harlem neighbourhood where he still operates his bank, in absentia, on East 116th Street between First and Pleasant Avenues, he earned his nickname Punchy as an amateur club fighter. Punchy's fistic career was cut short in October of 1932 when he was sent to Elmira Reformatory at 18 for armed robbery. Punchy being a nickname I'm sure he would have preferred. As we know from wiretaps years later, mobsters rarely called him Fat Tony to his face. Another rarely discussed piece of information about Anthony Salerno is that the powerful Genovese mobster allegedly had webbed feet. One newspaper would write of Salerno, When World War II came, he was classified 4F because he had two deformed fingers on each hand and webbed feet. 4F being the classification given to men who were rejected from serving in the military. Anthony Salerno famously had a large upstate New York farm in Rhinebeck. But, as mentioned earlier, Fat Tony spent a considerable amount of time in Florida and had an impressive property in Miami Beach. What isn't well known is that Anthony Salerno would sell this property to Chicago mobster Paul Rica. As one FBI file states, has expensive home in Miami and one reportedly worth $75,000 in New York. In 1954, sold a home on Pine Tree Drive to Paul the Waiter De Lucha for $75,000. De Lucha was the original surname of Paul Rica who of course was at one time the powerful boss of the Chicago outfit. Just another example of the long-time connection between the Genovese crime family and Chicago. I hope you found some of that interesting. Thanks for watching.